Hi, Marcin. Um, Hi. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to talk, talking to you. Uh, you. What team do you belong to? Um, I am Marcin Muszkiewicz, or named as, also known as HRW. Oh, yes. And, On uh, IRC. At Minaro, I am part of the developer platform team, and my work is mostly related to tool chains. Uh, I am maintainer of uh, Armor Cross Toolchain in Ubuntu since Maverick, which was 1010. Right, like uh, one year ago? Yes. Right, right, a year ago, but first packages were something like. January, like July, I think. Right. Um, so, yes, you have to say that the GCC that you have in Maverick is, uh, it corresponds to your work, right? GCC yeah, is native. Yes, yes, yes. During, We're talking about native tool chains, right? Uh, no. Uh, out, out. During Maverick, uh, I, start, I was working on uh, simplifying cross tool chains. Ah, cross tool chains. And I merged all the packaging stuff in GCC, so it was. Interesting work, something many, many lines got dropped, toolchain got, cross toolchain got improved, and since then we have in Ubuntu cross toolchain archive, and I hope that soon we will have it also in Debian. Um, as far as I as I remember, you have to get a special PPA to get that toolchain. Is that still a, is that still um, a case? No. Since Maverick, if you want inst to have cross toolchain, you can just install it. Okay. Uh, APT get GCC, ARM, Linux, new ABI, and oh, you right. get it. If you want newer version, I like uh, the Linaro ones. Then the one which is in archive, then there is a PPA for it. It's uh, Linaro Maintainers Toolchain PPA. It's named uh, Linaro Toolchain Backports. PPA. That's something you can find on the toolchains. Uh, Launchpad page, I believe. Yes, yes, at Linear or at uh, Linear Maintainers uh, page. Okay. Because it is their PPA. And this PPA provides packages for Lucid and everything which comes after Lucid, but we support currently, we support only Lucid and one Eric because we don't support anything other than uh, latest RTS and latest release. Was, uh, was Ubuntu for ARM built with uh, uh, Linaro based toolchains? Uh, I mean, using at least uh, Linaro provided optimizations? Uh, Ubuntu GCC is using uh, Linaro work. Okay. When you look at GCC packaging, it, uh, Ubuntu, not native GCC in Ubuntu has uh, all Linaro improvements uh, added. And cross tool chain also because cross tool chain follows the uh, setup of native uh, tool chain. So same patches, same configure options, except of course that it is a cross. Right. Other thing then this tool chain was for me was uh, I created packages with clean uh, GCC Linaro tool chain, which is mostly for those brave ones who want to check is is a uh, bug with something a matter of uh, Linaro changes or is it a matter of uh, Ubuntu changes because Ubuntu has also own set of patches. For tool chains? Yes, okay. for tool chains. For tool chains. Uh, basically GCC Linaro is a similar package to GCC Snapshot. If someone doesn't know what, the, what those packages are then probably doesn't have to use them. Um, now I, on my list there is a continuous integration for toolchain which will give us better uh, testing of toolchain that does it build today. Uh, right. Is it does it ge generate working binaries? Do the work binaries work? So there is a, a bit some work to do and uh, probably we will have to integrate something with Lava instead. Yes, yeah, Lava be. is the uh, Lava test is automation. The, yeah, it's Linaro, how do they know? Linaro um, automated validation something. Something, uh, right. Architecture. Or uh, yeah. it, which means that, it, in short, it's the tool to give, to test 
anything on boards. They have own lab with many boards of all members, etc., etc. If someone wants to check, they have website and wiki and all that thing. Uh, what else I do? Uh, were you the one behind uh, GDB multi uh, multi arch? I tried that a few a few days ago. GDB ago. multi arch was uh, done by Luig. Okay. Oh yes. But yes. I saw a post from you that recommended the use of that. Yes, yes, because I was working on... Uh, first I wanted to create uh, GDB only for ARML, but then we decided, no, we, we can enable all architectures and it should work. Then we disabled some sub-models of ARM, like Symbian support, etc. Uh, and now we have GDB multi-arch supports ARM, RPC, and few other architectures which we may not care about, but adding them was easy. And we have the same then in, I think, in our Ubuntu and Debian, so it's fine. Mm. And that's nice because you don't have to go through uh, ARM, Linux, uh, GNU, ABI, GDB. Yeah. You just you go just through GDB, GDB multi arch. Which is for, uh, available for every architecture, so. If you want, you can just install it there. What, what else do you do? Um, what else? I am, I am, one, I am involved into so-called ARM porting jam. It's, uh, oh yes, tell us more. It's on Wednesdays, right? Yes, it's the event which we have on every week this day. It's uh, when everyone who has a time and is a... Uh, and a bit of knowledge can start on checking why uh, packages doesn't build on ARM. So you have a list of packages that yes. don't build? Yes, oh, there okay. is a tag on Launchpad, so you can just search for ARM-porting-gem and you will get a lot of list of packages which fail to build on ARM and you can, for example, on mostly on Tuesday I do a quick Bug, quick check on bug and add, uh, and I'm tagging them if because, for example, many bugs are related to package want OpenGL and on ARM we have OpenGLS, so there is a special tag for such bugs, and those are bugs which I don't usually take care because I'm not OpenGL. I have no idea about OpenGL. <laughs> I have the, there is OpenGL, there is OpenGLS which is simpler, but have some other nice features, but this is beyond me. What other things? C could you tell me about what you did before yeah. joining Lenaro? We, uh, we met before in the community. The life before Lenaro. Yes. <laughs> Nice, nice question. I mean, when I joined Lenaro, I, I saw you on the list, so I say, oh, it must yeah, be good. You know, <laughs> and I'm other famous hackers that have been there <laughs> in the Amity Linux community for years. Yeah, I was, so. one of, I was one of those 20 people which were Linaro before Linaro has a, had a name, official name. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, we were new core, new core. Both of, both of those names were in use. And before Linaro, before Linaro I mostly were, was related to open embedded uh, systems. I started with Open Embedded in 2004 when I bought Sharpzarus. And that was the build platform for build yeah, system for, for Sharpzarus, really right? It was nice Linux PDA when I switched from Palm OS devices. And then I started playing with Open Embedded, I became, I got the right access, then I was working on my stuff at work, which was web programming, backend, backend usually. And then uh, I was working on Open Embedded in free time, and one day Matthew from Open at Hand asked me, Do you want to ask, work for us? There was no other question than yes. <laughs> so I started working with Open, Open at Hand. I remember those times. One mm. and a half year. I was, during that time, I was one of the main Pocky developers. Pocky is the short, version, the short uh, description is. It's a fork of Open Embedded. It works, it's nice, it has different goals that Open Embedded. Then Open Embedded got quiet by Intel. So you were an Intel employee? 
No. <laughs> this is the funny situation because I was, for three months, I was using Intel laptop. I had Intel email accounts, never signed any papers with Intel. And after those three months, we got, I moved to my own, back to my own business because they gave me really nice offer, but I didn't want it to move to UK. Okay. So then I started working with Bug Labs company from New York. They made really nice device named Bug, which is <laughs> often <laughs> described as Lego for IT. Okay. If someone wants to check, they have a website. Bug Labs. Mm -hmm. Yes, and during the and I was working with them, and one day someone from Canonical asked me, "Do you want to work for us this time?" It was their second attempt. This time I decided to, basically, why not? It would be a nice change. And that's how I got into Linaro. Did they tell you it was going to be on um, Linux on ARM and, and stuff like that? No. Uh, so you said yes without knowing uh, what to expect? Basically, the, from what I remember, the, the description was that it will be still something with ARM, because otherwise I will not join, because I like the ARM. The architecture, devices, the idea that you have can have really powerful machine which, which use nearly no power. And uh, I think it take after some Probably after, f I, first I had the... What's your uh, first ARM device? Was it the Sharp Zoros, as you said? My first Linux uh, ARM device, right. my first Linux ARM. ARM device, which was also my first Linux ARM device, was Sharp Zoros... With a PXA, a, oh, no, a stronger ARM. No, it was stronger. Yes, right. The one with PXA, I got uh, a bit later as a donation for, for my work, which was really awesome because I just I joined it to IRC and everyone started to gratulate gratulate me. <laughs> a new device and I had what I have no idea what we are talking about. Check the forums. I went to forums and wow someone from Australia wrote that he will give me the device. What was the name of the device? Uh, it was uh, C seven hundred seven six zero. Okay. I think it was the one with uh, Husky. The code name for it was Husky or? Oh, yes. Yes, it was Husky. Nice clamshell, VGA screen. When I got it, the file, the, and I, of course, installed OpenZaurus on it. What else? I was, my, I was maintainer of OpenZaurus at that time. And then I was release manager, and it was a long story. So is OpenMD an evolution of the OpenZoris uh, build engine, or is, was it written uh, yes. from scratch? Open no, it was uh, open before uh, OpenMD. Open that OpenZoris guys uh, were using build root. Ah, which I was didn't know that. Extremely hacked by them. I don't remember, but it was something that uh, I don't know. Did build root had? You will know better than me. <laughs> probably, did build root had a, a, a kernel configure, a kernel like, a kernel like configuration at the time. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think it had, but never mind. Yeah. Never mind. They, mm -hmm. Basically, they hacked build root as much as possible to get to it usable because it was open Zauros build system was used for open Zauros, for open Symbia, Simpad, many different, totally different devices. And at one moment they decided, no, it's time to write something from scratch instead of hacking on own hacks. And opened it up that it was created with a lot of uh, interesting ideas like you can have, uh, for example, you have a variable which tells where the sources are and also which patches to apply. And you can add uh, uh, you can add it to variable, variable something for according to architecture, according to device which you are targeting, according to distribution which you are targeting, and it just works. 
you don't have to select each time in configuration that you want to build this device with these CPUs, etc., etc. But two systems, different uses. So the next thing is that you can still use uh, Open Embedded is still alive, and you can use Linaro tool chains now or yes. Linaro GCC. Open uh, Embedded is still uh, alive. It, they, uh, and Pocky got. Pocky morphed into Yakto project, right. which is which is uh, Yakto project is Pocky plus a few other tools which they developed, and Pocky is well, Pocky was created by Open Hand and it was Intel. Now it's Linux from the, uh, under Linux Next foundation, condition. which is nice because it shows that it's really independent from any company, and uh, something like. Year or something ago, Open Embedded and Yakto started working on merging uh, work. So that's how Open Embedded, was, Open Embedded Core was crea created, and now Open Embedded and Yakto both are using the layers idea. When you have Open Embedded Core on the bottom, and then you just add our layers right. like distribution support, this device support, this extra desktop environment, etc., etc., etc. There many layers and possibilities are right. and they can they can and basically they they, they complement what uh, Lenaro is doing Lenaro yes, provides the, the infrastructure the tool chains kernels and they can yes, build some systems out of that in open embedded they are using using uh, Lenaro a lot of Lenaro changes and the guy who maintained tool chain in open embedded named Cam Wright I probably pronounced it wrongly, so Ken, sorry. Uh, is merging uh, linear changes. It's like one, once per few weeks. I don't remember exactly because it's like there is a huge amount of list mails on uh, open visit mailing list. Okay, well, it was nice talking to um, a early member of the Embedded Linux community. <laughs> uh, being one of the first ones to port Linux to, uh, oh, but in the case of the shop source, you had Linux, but you were improving on it. Yes, I was improving. With I was never porting Linux to new device. I was uh, just using what the giants before me right. uh, made. But you contributed to making it a, uh, a more useful platform, and then yes, uh, eventually we had products made with Linux. At that time, yeah. there was no effect. Uh, I don't know, to know, but uh, with OS hmm. by Valve and now HP. Is, is built using Open Embedded. Ah, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, you will, don't see that anywhere. HP doesn't tell it, but if you look at uh, RootFS on those devices, it's cleanly visible that it was Open Embedded built. Yeah, I remember those early days, uh, Embedded Linux just didn't exist, except perhaps on some network devices, and really, we really had to feed the, the, the loop uh, I mean, create some software like GPE, OP, if you remember yes, that, the yes, ancestors of. Both. Right. The, uh, the, the funny is the ancestors of uh, Memo. OP is still developed. Paul Eagleton, I met him on New York City last week, is still developing. It, it, like I said, he told that this is a hobby project for him now. Nearly no one. You have to explain it. what OP so is. It's so a fork of Qtopia. Uh, it, it's a, which is a set of applications for Qt 2.0. Uh, to, to, to that, to that now 2.3.10 for okay. the, there was 2.12 release but we got stuck on point ten because there were so different some changes in dot twelve we just broke too many things. I and remember those times. OP was nice. I one, used it. One point two two release was uh, made because I got uh, VGA VGA. Screen in Zabros, and I was working on improving usability of applications because many of them had hard code fonts for QVGA, which didn't look good. But for Sharp Zabros, never mind how ugly kernel they had, they were at least Linux based. Right. And they started lots of things like Open Embedded uh, yes, and open some Zabros, communities. We uh, had OP, we had GPA, but to be honest, OP and GPA were uh, created. OP was one of ba was basic 
was based uh, environment for OpenSaurus, but GPE was based environment for GTK. familiar distribution. Oh yeah, right. Mm. When familiar joined Open Embedded community, they took GPE with them, and then OpenSaurus 3.5.2, which was second release from Open Embedded. I'm impressed by your both. memory for yeah, both versions. Yeah, you I never forget. I released 3.4, 3.3, 3.4, no, 3.3 was through Michael. I released 3.4, 3.4. Make it our, right? Which was the last release. We, there were release candidates for 3.5.4.2, but uh, at this time we decided that we will not continue development of OpenSaurus and we made our team moved to Actrum Linux. And Actrum Linux still exists. It's still alive, yes. And it's, it is in the project. Yesterday, TI released BeagleBone, which, which came Effectively, from, from Actrum Linux. Right. Uh, we seem to have like a, a veterans uh, conversation, like <laughs> people who have been uh, working on those things that perhaps nobody really cares anymore. <laughs> uh, could you tell me what boards you have? Like the uh, low-cost boards? <laughs> Which boards do I have? Do, do you hack with? Um, on my desk now, I have two Panda boards. It's uh, A1 from Linaron and my private EA1, which is... Uh, which so that's very early Panda. Like yes, the, it's uh, the... All this, but still support. All, all this from oh, still because support. Because there was version. A0 before. Uh, no, right? for the versions before were, didn't have uh, num names. Okay. <laughs> they were named like six layer panda, eight layer panda with uh, with all, really old CPU, etc. So I have panda from Inaro. I have EA, EA1 panda, early adopters one, which oh, yes. has, but my panda is one of ten produced Panda with broken GPIO uh, wiring. So it, for some tools, it uh, is A1. Uh, I have quick start, uh, start from Linaro at desk, from, but- From Freescale, that, you mean? From Freescale, from Freescale, yes. I still have to get it running and blog about it. I have three Beagle boards, normal Beagle boards, not XM. I, both, two of them I got from Bug Labs because when we were uh, mo slowly moving to, for, to OMAP 3, so BeagleBoard was used as a uh, developer platform. I have STRX on NHK 15, which was a nice board, but now it's totally duplicated and obsolete. I have SIM 1, which is using Cirrus Logic, crazy CPU. With very crazy floating point unit, which never was properly supported by vendor. I have Atmel boards. Oh, yes. And I have a few other boards. Recently, I just, uh, and also I have uh, some uh, customer develop, customer uh, pro products which we're using for development, like open mocha phones, Sharp Zaurus, Shiva plug. And some time ago, I just created a page on my wiki to get uh, to write a list until I still re more or less remember <laughs> what I have. And I wrote who has it, who has what, and the rules how to get how to get uh, my hardware for some if you want to use it. It's like I have to know you, no no hardware modifications without permission, etc., etc. And so far, my favorite You have a nice collection that could end up in the Computer History Museum, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> one day. Yeah, but I don't, I don't have my first Zaurus anymore. I gave it to the guy who was working on 2.6 kernel for this model. So he had, with two, he, could, he was able to run 2.4 crap X kernel on one, and 2.6 uh, on the second, and compare how it behaved. Perfect. So what do you think the, about the newest boards? Uh, uh, do they help to create a community? Um, like you, you, you are at the heart of the, commu uh, the communities. Uh, you have lots of friends and uh, pe 
people you know in the industry that are using those boards, yeah, like the Panda know, and it's like Quick Start? With, when it comes to today's boards, okay, we have big community around BeagleBoard because you have also BeagleBoard was used as a developer platform for many products, Bug from Bug Labs, uh, always innovating. Uh, right, they make some uh, touch book. Touch books, yes, on yes. books. Mm -hmm. And, few, and many, many different. And because the devices. hardware was open, right, you could yes, clone those boards. Yes, you got schematics. Uh, you could get. Uh, I, th I think you could also get some help from TI with with uh, designing your hardware. Um, Panda has community. Snowball also have some kind of community. I don't. I don't follow. Uh, many of today's boards, uh, up behind the Freescale uh, boards and devices there is a PowerDeveloper.org mm -hmm. uh, community which was started when with Afika, with PowerPC based Afika, and it's still, this right. part is still alive, and they cover different uh, Freescale products. Right? Do you think Linaro could have existed without the invention uh, of those boards, like um, Beagle, without the... No, 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 no. Yes, perhaps. We, have, we need to have uh, cheap uh, community boards. It's like, it's, they are different than st standard developer boards, but NHK15, for example, was uh, something like 1,000 euro cost. But it had white VGA screen, connect, a lot of connectors, etc., etc. Et it was nice, uh, board, nicely made board, but for community, you need good, good design and cheap board with enough uh, connectors so people will be able to connect anything. Look at BeagleBoard. You had, BeagleBoard had uh, two different Ethernet uh, adapters extensions. It had extension for using uh, bug labs modules, which existed only in something like 20 pieces, the adapter. And they have trainer boards from King Cantors. Right. Effectively, it created a big ecosystem of uh, hardware yes. providers, software makers, exactly, uh, exactly. community developers. At ELC, there was a, a self-contained uh, Beagle board, which had a uh, seven-inch screen, it had battery, which was able to power everything, it had Bluetooth, it had Wi-Fi, and you can just wear it, take it with you, because it that didn't have any cables, as long as battery was, as there was some juice in battery. So, yes, the community uh, behind uh, those chip boards is huge. It has to be, we have to support it, because community gives us nice ideas, which we will not get without them. Sometimes it's like a uh, com community will complain that something is made in a way which they don't like, but everything costs. So if we have a bigger board, which costs now, I don't know, 150 bucks, something like this, it's impossible to make this board cheaper because everything costs and this is still a good board. Panda board is, fa is, of course, is uh, faster, Snowball is faster, Origin is faster, but they are harder to buy. Bigger boards are produced in their Clones of bigger boards you can, which you can buy, and it just work. Connect anything to it. I heard the figure like something like fifty thousand bigger boards were made, or something like that. Fifty thousand. Or perhaps you think it's more? Perhaps I'm mistaken. Um, Panda board is one year old now, and if I correct, remember correctly, I don't know. Was it? 1,000 Panda boards sold, or 9,000? Probably have, 9, I believe. Yes, they have it on a website. <coughs> so, 9,000 boards in one year, 
is huge. Now, the backlog of orders for Panda boards is huge, but to be honest, this is cheap community board. So when TI produces silicon, and there is a huge queue of commercial vendors, so the commercial, commercial vendors goes first. Of course. Because they will create devices, put them on the market, a lot of PR will be around. Google Nexus is powered by Web4. I think that when... The latest one? Yes. I think that when it got released... Was that officially announced? Yes, of okay. course. It got officially released. BlackBerry Playbook is on Web4 based. LG had on Web4 based phone. Uh, Arcos made has OMAP4 based tablets. So OMAP4 gets into a lot of devices. So, and due to this, we also have, for example, working Android on Panda, because there are few vendors who are working, who are using Android on OMAP4 based devices. Same is with OMAP3 on Beagle. Right. There are many phones on OMAP3. Other devices. That's interesting to draw the parallel bit, bit, between what, wh when you started, you used the Sharp, Sharp Zoros, which was a powerful, quite cheap device as well, uh, and get, it creates... 75% of my monthly salary. Ouch! <laughs> yeah, my, my girlfriend <laughs> was thinking that I, that, I should, that I am crazy, that I am spending so much money on pound. Right. And it was really worth it. Right. So imagine what the, the kind of com community that we are creating today with Lenaro, with the hardware, hardware boards that are cheap, powerful. Yeah. Um, we're going to see the benefits in, this, in a few years from now. Well, we see the benefits today, but the, the people get, who get started on, on, on those devices with the software we produce at Lenaro and the rest of the main upstream project, uh, we're going to have terrific effects in, in eight years from now. And people are talking about the days sure. when they when started they, hacking they, on 2011. They, yeah, when they, got, great. when they bought Panda and they just fetched the Linaro image, put on it, wow, it works. I connect two monitors, wow, it works. I have audio, it just works. I have nothing to do with it. Even connected to my Wi Fi, great. Perhaps they can act on new things that we didn't anticipate. Exactly, it's like, it's, you can, it, uh, sometimes it's really hard to imagine what people are able to do. Sharp, Sharp, the last models of Sharp Zarus had one USB host port. But people found that if you, desire, if you disassemble device, there are a few test points on which there are USB signals. So they started putting Wi-Fi inside, Bluetooth inside, <laughs> etc. So a USB hub plus all those things? Sort of. Okay. It was just a matter of finding as small ones as possible to fit everything inside. Today it will be easier because we have such small USB, USB Bluetooth, bus, chips, such mm. small Wi-Fi cards. At that time, they were much, much bigger. So, yeah, what I like to remember from this is that you, you never know what people are going to make. Yes. Like, for, for the, the Sharp, the Sharp never expected to create a, a build system like Open Embedded. Oh, they didn't create it, but they caused the creation of lots of things. The creation you know, of lots of things. Sharp was basically on all the. They produced those devices for something like five, five six years at least and they were using the same software. You, you went to shop, you bought the newest Sharp Zauros, and most of software was at least one or two years old. We got something from community. We, the community had, on Zauros had, there, was, there were a few distributions, better or worse ones. I will not speculate which were, mm -hmm. which were better or which were not. And people were using different things. People were doing different things. You, you plugged a Wi-Fi card and you had uh, uh, administrator terminal, po uh, pocket terminal. Oh yes, people were I, using that a lot, right? I, was, I saw people who were 
just taking Zaurus from pocket, logging into some public Wi-Fi, and changing things on servers. Because it had keyboard, it had terminal, it had network connection. Today, you take the phone from the pocket, which has mm -hmm. Wi-Fi inside, you use hardware or on-screen keyboard, and you do the same. Screen is better, has high, a bit higher resolution, but it's the same. Time passed, but time passed. We have newer toys. Most of my old devices is somewhere in drawers or at friends, which are using them for different things. And for example, do you know that BeagleBot was in space? No. Where? Uh, on a satellite? Someone, someone made uh, a balloon with BeagleBot, battery, I think some camera, and it got into the, uh, yeah, into the line where, where the officially Cosmos stops. Oh, like uh, 100 kilometers or something, something like, like that. This. Okay. Wow. That's yeah, awesome. Open Moco was in space. Open Moco. Oh, yes. Phone. Same situation. You just take a balloon and let it flow. That's the, the good thing about the, the technology we create today. We, 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 we give software and hardware to the community and they can create uh, yes. uh, wonderful inventions with that. The same things we can't, cannot absolutely anticipate. Like, Possibilities are like, unlimited. Like, like if what, you have an idea, you, you can make it. And that's exactly what we did uh, eight years ago when we started those communities. That's yeah. right. Thank you, well, Martin. That was a very interesting uh, conversation. Thank you. Uh, you can, it's, it's, it's also a pleasure to follow some technology news with your Twitter account and your blog. So, you, would you like to, to tell us the, the names of those? The, the, the oh, URL uh, of the blog and the Twitter you know, name? It is uh, hard to pronounce because um, my Twitter account is, uh, is HRW with Polish pronunciation. It's HRW, which okay. is H. Right. W U if I if I okay. spell it properly. And my blog post, my blog is on the address which is my name dot surname dot com dot pl. Oh, okay, good. It will be my, And that's an easy way, way to get access to your Twitter account then, probably. Uh, is there a link? You know, I don't have a link on my uh, blog. I think I will have to do some about me page and add there. Twitter, Google Plus, maybe even Facebook, but I don't use. I am using Facebook less and less nowadays. So you can go to Lenaro Connect on Twitter, I believe, and uh, it's following your. Yes, it's I'm, still it's yeah, following I'm your one, tweets, I'm I believe. I'm one of followers of Lenaro Connect. I don't know that Lenaro Connect follows me. It's, I don't care. <laughs> so it's always uh, interesting stuff about either yes, Lenaro or posts, embedded devices. My posts are on uh, Planet Lenaro, so. I have to finally sit and write something about this conference, ELC, and at home I will have to play a bit with Freescale Quick Start. And yes, about it's it's interest, an, an interesting source of information for for hobbyists. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I, I appreciate that. What, uh, is am what amazes me is that I don't position my blog. I don't do any extra linking some in many places which many of those CAO guys <laughs> do. And it still gets when you write something like uh, Zauru, open Zaurus into Google and one of first hits will be my, web, my website. Perfect. Well, thank you for this very um, entertaining uh, conversation. And it gives us some perspective and the way the community evolved and the industry evolved. <sighs> Yes, it is. Uh, at least in my perception. Yeah, I, I, I mean, from what I know, there will be in February there will be newer version of Snowball with uh, some hardware changes. Mm -hmm. Nothing uh, special, but few things should work better. And I need to catch the hardware guy because yesterday I met him and he wants some feedback from me about the board, which I don't own even, and don't want, and for different reasons. And uh, what else? 
Yeah, you, well, it's good. We will get faster Thunderbolt with 4460 CPU. It's official. Um, who knows? So maybe we will get OMAP 5 board. What will be the board? I will tell you, I don't know. It will be better, better said. I hope that it will have uh, things like uh, USB port from done in such way like it is done Beagle Bone. So you have one connector, serial, JTAG, and USB gadget, which is really awesome combination. Oh. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And good luck with the rest of Lenaro Connect. Thank you. Thank you.